we need to talk about the Princess of Wales again. Conspiracy theories on social media about Catherine and her whereabouts are reaching a fever pitch that we have never seen before, following a Mother's Day picture debacle that has put palace communications and trust right under the spotlight. Before this edited picture was released, there were already theories circulating, as addressed by Camilla in our previous Royal Insight episode. But it was only until this photo came under scrutiny that real people and not just internet sleuths were tipped into thinking this may be a real thing. Now theories about the princess's whereabouts have gotten so acceptably crazy that while you may think it's bad in Britain, I was just away in the US for 10 days and every second person was asking me not whether Catherine was recovering from abdominal surgery well, but whether she was still alive. This just goes to highlight the mess that Kensington Palace has currently found themselves in and how they might conceivably get out of it when it's time for the princess's big return to public life. So I think it's fair to say that the fervor about Catherine has now spun out of control. In the last week, we've seen some of the biggest celebrity names on social media coming out to talk about the unfolding drama, and many to make fun of the situation. Kim Kardashian posted a series of photos of herself to her 364 million followers on Instagram, with the caption, on my way to go find Kate. Then we saw the actress Blake Lively coming out with a new ad campaign for her alcohol company that excessively and evidently used Photoshop on a picture of her with the caption, now you know why I've been MIA. These celebrity joke references don't just show how big the narrative surrounding the Princess of Wales has gotten. It shows just how deeply it has cut through to people in this popular culture collision of conspiracy, social media, virality, and royal family gossip in general that she is the butt of a joke in a female empowerment celebrities campaign brand has also shown the dangerous extent to which Catherine, a mother of three who is currently in recovery from major surgery, has been dehumanized in people's minds. In all honesty, I do think people should just leave them to get on with their lives. She's allowed her privacy just like everybody else. Kudos to them for doing the best that they can and being human. But I think for this particular subject, it's worth bearing in mind the person behind the screen, column inches and tabloids. It may be a mixture of compelling royal gossip and just the right amount of unknown, but the princess has every right to choose not to share what her major abdominal surgery was for. Or at least people thought so until the edited family photo set the whole thing alight. The Photoshop picture of Catherine and her three children quickly caused what can only be described as chaos, as it was very publicly pulled from distribution by the world's major photographic agencies over accusations it had been manipulated. On the face of it, Catherine coming out and essentially falling on her sword by admitting that she experimented with editing the picture that Kensington Palace put out for Mother's Day could have potentially stopped the wildfire. But by that point, theories had already exploded. And beyond her apologizing for the confusion it caused, it didn't help that she chose not to explain why she wanted to edit a seemingly natural picture of the family that Prince William took. The rest, what is now being dubbed online as Kate Gate and Kate Spiracy, is history already. That's how fast this whole narrative is moving. And the world seems to continue to only want to get deeper into the rabbit hole. The edited picture has since raised many legitimate concerns and questions about the way communication operates within the royal palaces. It has, in other words, dented the public's trust in the information received and previously quickly accepted from them. The picture was released partly in what seemed like a bid by the institution to quell a surge of online conspiracy theories about Catherine's whereabouts and well-being which largely started in America, because most people didn't know why they hadn't seen her since Christmas. And we don't want to get into all these rumors, like, is she getting a BBL? Is she divorcing William? Is she gone girling him? Oh my God. Do you think she's gone girling him? She could, my TikTok was saying so. But as we now know, the move spectacularly backfired and raised so many more questions than it answered. Why was it edited in the first place? Is that an old picture of Catherine superimposed on a new one? Why was she not wearing her wedding ring? Why was her editing not spotted by AIDS? Why did the palace not explain specifically what had been tampered with in the picture? And the list goes on. Now, after online sleuths have gone so far as to demand for proof of life, a video taken by a member of the public has been published online showing the princess leaving the Windsor farm shop alongside William, looking busy and on the mend from surgery. 
but this has only caused conspiracy theorists to double down on their theories, bringing out accusations of a body double or an old video, or even just that if it's her, she's looking too well and why is she not back at work? As our royal editor Hannah Furness has recently written, at this point, the princess and the palace simply cannot win. And should it be their responsibility to engage with conspiracy theorists online? They have so far been adamant in keeping to their original message. The princess is convalescing in her home in Windsor, and that will remain the case until after Easter. In the meantime, she wants, and frankly should get, privacy to recover. Now, after Easter does not mean we should necessarily expect her immediately to appear on the holiday Sunday. In Palace Speak for the Waleses, that typically means after the school holidays, which finish toward the back end of April. But while we don't know her concrete return date yet, the end of this media storm is looming, as we near the conclusion of what has always been her projected recovery period. For now, it looks as if the palace has lost control of the narrative in quite a major way, and that going forward, the princess's launch back into the public eye will have to be very carefully measured and planned. Should she release a statement updating the public on her well-being? Should she just wait until well-wishers ask her how she's feeling during a walkabout? Should she even have to share what she went through? These are all questions that her team will be mulling over at this very moment, but they are doing so while facing the pressure of the princess and her health inadvertently dominating headlines and social media all over the world. It may be the case that whatever they do at the moment, the story manages to take on and fuel a new conspiracy theory each time. So why even bother? Perhaps then the motto of never complain, never explain is best followed. Or does that even work anymore in the modern world? Perhaps some people may feel guilty eventually for stoking these fires when or if the extent of her surgery and potential struggle through recovery ever gets revealed. There's no doubt that stories nowadays can take on a life of their own through social media. And perhaps it's best not to feed the fire. But if anything, this furore shows us that there is still a remarkable importance of this institution, not only in Britain, but globally. This may be uncharted territory for the palace teams and the royal family, but it seems to be a problem they can no longer ignore and hope for the best on. What is clear is that we have yet to see it all play out. Royal Insight is a fortnightly video output by The Telegraph, where we give you our insider knowledge and analysis of the main royal stories. If you have any topics you'd like us to cover, please let us know in the comment section below and visit our website for more royal content, news and analysis.